Hey, I'm Caroline and summer 2020 has kept me rooted in the UK, so I'm undertaking a glorious road trip around a small part of Scotland's highlands and islands. In the last few episodes, I've checked out a few locations made famous thanks to their starring roles in Hollywood movies, explored jaw-droppingly beautiful landscapes, and let my hiking shoes hit the trails, ticking off walks in Glencoe, conquering the UK's highest peak, Ben Nevis, and an easier than expected wander along the Kerrang, a hike that now sits firmly in my top 10 favourites. In today's episode, I'll wander up one of the Isle of Skye's most well-known trails, the Old Man of Storr, before heading across the island to visit the remarkable coral beaches. and welcome to what looks to be a relatively fine morning here in Scotland on the Isle of Skye. We have come to the Old Man of Store. We think it's just supposed to be a relatively short hike, maybe about 3.5 kilometres. Definitely less effort than what we took yesterday when we were doing the Kerrang. We are hoping that the rain is going to hold off at least for the morning, but I think the forecast later on this afternoon is going to be checking it down. So we've had quite an early start today. The good news is we've managed to get here to the parking a lot with loads and loads of spaces is still left just getting changed up with shoes hiking shoes on and we're gonna make a start in just a moment so one of the things that makes a hike really good for me is when we get to see spectacular views as we go and this is probably the biggest letdown so far they have got out some kind of machinery to I think rebuild the footpath and it's just all the way down the hillside we've got these huge rubble sacks with all of the rocks that I guess are going to get made into the stepping stones and then you've got the digger down at the bank as well so it's a little bit of a disappointment and then to make matters worse because I think all of these bags are strewn across what is the normal path it's meant that everyone has had to go off to the right hand side of the main path and it just feels like it's destroying the ecosystem at the moment I suppose we technically speaking are adding to that but I'm just hoping that whoever it is who's organising all of this, whether it's like the Scottish government, they're doing it because they know that the ecosystem isn't too fragile and that it can recover from this because I would hope that they would have shut it off otherwise. I am just hoping that it is okay that we're still going up here and we're not actually causing too much damage but fingers crossed the higher up we get the more we can get away from all of this building site material because it is ruining this hike at the moment. managed to get past that building site and it's really beautiful now we got the views out across the water I'm not entirely sure what the land is over there I think that there might be the island of Rasse I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly and then I think the Scottish mainland a little bit further over and behind us is the old man of store but we're going to keep on heading up the hillside uh, to try and get an even better view than the one that we've got at the moment
view up here, although it probably wasn't as strenuous as what we were first expecting for it to be, but it's incredibly blustery up here, as you can probably tell by my hair going all over the place. So I'm expecting that we'll probably be only up here just for a few quick snaps and then we'll head back down. As we're coming back down, it's gone incredibly more busy and some people have actually climbed up to where the old man is and it is crazy just looking at the size of these tiny people they look like ants up there in comparison to the huge rock and it just starts to get a little bit of perspective as to how huge these rocks are and how I suppose spectacular it is that they're still standing even though they're completely detached from any of the cliffs around them. Lunch, and then we've driven across the Isle of Skye to the coral beaches, which is where I am at the moment. Skeletonized seaweed, I guess, has created what's known as marl, and it's that marl that's been broken down to create these beautiful light sanded beaches. I wouldn't quite say that they're white sand because they're not, it is more yellow, but I certainly just never thought that in the UK we could get beaches that are as beautiful as these and the water is so clear as well. The mall that's still out in the actual sea, it's got these tiny nooks and crannies in it and it attracts the really small bits of sea life such as sea urchins and starfish. They like to hide in those nooks and crannies and then of course they attract their predators such as pollock and cod and of course those guys like to be eaten by the likes of seals. So we're trying to keep a bit of an eagle eye out and see if we're able to spot any seals or any of those slightly bigger fish. We've seen a few kids around with tiny fishing nets. I think they've maybe gone like rock pooling to see if they could find any of the smaller sea creatures. I don't think anyone's had so much luck with that. I've not seen any in any buckets. But it's just really peaceful here. Yes, there are a few people. But the more that we're walking around the peninsula, the quieter that it's getting. And just again, the lapping sound of the sea waves a little bit like yesterday at Brothers Point is just so soothing and calming. It's wonderful. and how much of single track roads I guess were to get out here but we've come to Nice Point because it was supposed to be a really lovely hike it's a peninsula that juts out into the sea and we, it, it, there's a lighthouse at the end of it we were going to have a wander all the way down there and we've arrived and I've got the car boot open at the moment just trying to shield me from the wind and the rain but it is really badly raining 
It is incredibly gusty and I feel like this may have just been a little bit of a wasted journey out to this point because I think we've all just decided to say let's not bother actually hiking it. We'll get out, we'll get a few snaps and then I think we're just going to get back in the car and get back to our cottages. So at the parking lot we came across this couple and they were saying it's at least half an hour's walk to be able to see the lighthouse. But instead of following the actual hiking trail, I decided to run up the hill and I have managed to be able to see the lighthouse, which you might be able to see behind me, but my goodness, it is really windy and really quite rainy. So I think this is about it. I'm going to get a quick snap and then I'm running back to the car. This is horrendous. my time on the Isle of Skye comes to a close, I still have adventures in the Ascent region and on the Isle of Harris and Lewis to look forward to. If you haven't done so already, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can join me in my adventures as I go in search of wildlife both on land and at sea, scope out picturesque beaches, explore some of the history that Lewis has to offer and as always, undertake